Hello everybody, I'm back. This is the second video. I thought I'd go ahead and do this while I had it set up here on the tripod. Uh, not the best uh, setup in the world. Uh, eh, it'll work I guess. Anyway, here we go. So, this is I'm going to go back and show you something about uh, Network Visualizer which so far is just a sort of proof of concept little application um, takes a matrix uh, one thing I've added here is I can say oh you can use a matrix in an R data file sort of like we have in the other tools for the flu um, a symmetric, symmetric undirected matrix sort of a tab delimited file like our regain files or a SIF file which we use as a way to just pull out the upper triangular of a regain file without the diagonal so it's just the interactions so we're gonna need a, we're gonna need a matrix and an R data file here so I'm gonna switch my history over so all my saved histories so you can save these histories over here give them a name, it will keep them safe for you. So I'm going to go back to the matrix visualizer where we have some stuff loaded over here that'll that'll work for the for the tool. So I'm going to use this R data, the Viz matrix R data file that I uploaded just like I showed before. So let's execute this and oh my god been working on it so who knows if this is going to work hey well okay let's see what happens builds a shiny app there it is one thing I've added over here is a uh, couple of things but depending on the view you cho you choose, you get a different sort of set of uh, tools for that specific tool. For a histogram, you get the choice of bins. So that's you could add more things, colors, whatever. Um, heat map. Uh, all I really put in here was just a proof of concept. You can change the heat map colors and the network graph. This is the one I really need do some work on. Gives you a threshold for, uh, should just be threshold instead of threshold correlation because in this case it looks like it's from uh, maybe a regain or yeah probably. So we can filter the network down. It's pruning edges. So that's pretty cool. This sizing of this area again, we want to maximize this best as possible. There's a way to interrogate Shiny and say, hey, you've got this area over here, how big is it? That way you can, in your script, make the necessary changes. So I've also added this, you can download whatever's over here in this area as a whatever you choose, PDF, PNG, TIFF. SVH. All basically all the choices from R. But this is having a little bit of trouble. This is a tricky thing to do. Having to look at forums and things like that. For one thing it doesn't work in R Studio's little viewer, which is nice to use for testing. You just within R Studio say run run your own little browser of sorts. But it depends on the a real browser running for this download plot to work. Uh, so I can choose to save this. It says it's an HTML document, which it's not. It's a binary PNG file, but it goes to downloads, starts to download. So it's at least doing what it's supposed to do, even though it's not, for some reason, doing the right thing. You can look at the code a little bit here. Um, for the For the tool, it's a tricky thing here. I don't know if you can see this for inputs. 
there's something called a conditional so it's a tag it's a matching tag give the conditional a name in this case I'm going to have a conditional based on a select box so a drop down box with choices and then you can say when the value is one of these choices that has a value you give it up here so it's sort of like a if else if else or a switch statement and then uh, you can do the parameters for the particular file that you will accept so if you say I want an R data file you say okay I want to format R data file you can't give me something else it looks in your history and says where is an R data file that's a valid choice even though we don't know what's in that R data file and it could be anything we're gonna roll with it for now same way with these tab files they're gonna error out if they're not what we expect so in your script you really need to have a way of dealing with that so the only output here is an HTML file so what we're saying is in this area over here the output of the tool is HTML which is this so you can't say the output is a shiny app there's just no such mechanism for that so you have to say okay I'm going to spit out some HTML. You can do anything fancy here you want to do. But the main thing is to put the link here. And the link goes to an actual shiny server running on a port over here that was created on the fly from what we specified in the tool. So that's a pretty slick thing. So that's the <coughs> excuse me, conditional input, which is a cool thing. I think uh Nick and I figured this out three or four years ago, playing around with it, trying to figure it out. A lot more documentation online now since we were working for it, oh no, three or four versions ago. All right, so what this actually runs in this case, we use the CData construct idea again, so we don't have to specially, for quotes and things like that, we don't have to do anything special if you need them. So we're going to run Python this time same thing tool directory this is an important thing it's this magic thing it's a variable and uh, what do we want to run and the parameters so we do the same thing here as we did in the R script we just bring in the parameters here I am again printing them out just to make sure I'm getting what I think I need so here's a big elf, big elf uh, if else statement we're saying if we get a SIF file Oh boy, we're going to have to do something with that because we want to visualize it as a heat map and the graph thing. We could use a uh, JSONC list or something like that, but just having a matrix is what we really want. So this little bit of Python code converts it to a matrix, writes it to a temporary file, then encodes that temporary file as an R data file because that's what the Shiny app is looking for. So the whole point of all this conversion is Shiny App is looking for something called vismatrix.rdata. So when we make a copy of it, make it a you know a temporary name somewhere, it still expects this thing, this vismatrix file. So this does a little trick here. So here's uh, we're going to copy this little temporary file that we created which is the matrix over to vismatrix.rdata. I know that sounds crazy, but it's some trickery. And it took me a while to figure that out, so I don't expect to explain it here in a few seconds. Uh, so here's the conversion for an rdata file. Nothing basically. Just take whatever the rdata file from the database that Galaxy has, take whatever it's calling it, give it a new name. Uh, Otherwise, we're reading from a tab delimited file, so we just read that in. Did a little trick here to, I want to run an R command. So, I create an R script on the fly. Put the two commands I want in there to read this tab file. And then save it as an R data file. Because, again, that's what Shiny expects. So this is kind of nutty. We've got XML to R that writes an R script, yada, yada, yada. All right. So after all that happens, we go down here and we basically copy the basic shiny 
uh, application, which you can debug and test all you want in R, copy it over to the server, and then this just makes a copy of it into a new directory to, as a, I guess the date to make it unique. And copies the new matrix over and then writes that little bit of HTML here to return to Galaxy. Has the link in here to the new application. Like I said, running on a host. Which I just noticed here. This doesn't need to be localhost. This needs to be whatever host like Thor or whatever it's running on. Hmm. That might work since it's referencing localhost to reference. Uh, I'm talking out loud. Okay. So that's how that works. Just wanted to update you on that neat conditional thing and the download and some other little tricky things that show up. Anyway, there's probably people that work in Galaxy all day long, every day. They don't think anything about this, but if you're switching projects and moving here and there, it can be tricky. Especially we're working with Shiny and Galaxy and R and Python and shell scripts. Story of my life. Anyway, there you go. Have fun. See you later.